The Victorian period was a busy time for crew. By the late 1800s, it was already established as a railway town, busy with people going to and from work at crew works, working for the railway company. Not far from the railway works in 1894 lived a lady called Ada Neild. Ada Neild came from a working class family and in 1881 her father moved the family to Crewe in search of work on the railway. By the age of 24 she was working as a tailor, making clothes at Compton's clothing factory in Bridal Road, Crewe. Down on Bridal Road you can still see the remnants of the old factory where Ada worked. We know about Ada Neal's life from the anonymous letters that she wrote in 1894 to the Crew Chronicle. She signed off her letters as a Crew Factory Girl. Her letters discussed the harsh conditions that women were expected to work in in the factory compared to their male colleagues. The women were paid a lot less than the men, earning just eight shillings a week and having to work 10 hours a day, six days a week. That's about £33 in today's money. They even had money taken off of their wages for taking a tea break. Ada was most concerned with her and her colleagues not being given the living wage. Instead, she called it a lingering, dying wage. Her letters said, As for recreation and enjoying the beauties of nature, the seasons come and go, and we barely have time to notice whether it's spring or summer. To take what may be considered a good week's wage, the work has to be so close and unremitting that we cannot be said to live. We merely exist. We eat, we sleep, we work. Endlessly, ceaselessly work from Monday morning until Saturday night. Those of us who, for any reason, laziness or otherwise, do not manage to arrive before the doors are locked, are allowed to come in at half past eight or nine o'clock on the payment of a penny. Eight shillings a week. I wish some of those would try to live on it for just a few weeks, as the factory girl has to do 52 weeks in a year to pay board and lodging to provide herself decent boots and clothing to stand in all weathers, to pay an occasional doctor's bill and a holiday away from the scope of her daily drudging. Are you prepared, my reader, to come and work with us nine hours in the factory and then to come home with us and begin again and sew until you can sew no longer from sheer fatigue? Her managers found out she was sending anonymous letters to the newspaper and she had to leave her job. But her letters made such an impact, so the Crew Chronicle called for Compton's clothing factory to make change to the wages of its female tailors. Ada went on to work with various causes, campaigning for the rights of women and their difference in treatment to men. She especially supported working class women in workhouses, and she made sure that a rule went through which allowed conversations between workhouse women during lunchtime. She went on to support the women's suffrage movement, campaigning for working class women to be allowed the right to vote for government. In 